We were talking a little earlier about SpaceX, and I'm curious the the uh, first conversation you remember having where it was about, hey, we might build a rocket company here. I was in a conference room. My brother asked me to join, and it was more like a nonprofit venture. I don't think we used the words nonprofit because we didn't really know what that meant at the time, but it was a philanthropic venture for sure to, to take a potted plant, just like in a little ceramic jar with, with leaves on it, and get it to Mars. Just to prove that it can be done. Not, not, not like build a business or anything like that. And, uh, and then that turned into, well, maybe the best way to do this is as a for-profit. And, and I remember thinking to myself, well, I'm gonna invest because I'd love to support my brother, but also kind of cool to go watch rockets launch and blow up and stuff. And so that all kind of worked out pretty well. <laughs> you were talking earlier about the price structure and then the alternative SpaceX ended up coming around and offering with cost plus. Well, uh, well, sorry, I mean, the, I'm the, sorry, the alternative to exactly. cost plus that, yeah. yeah so, so the military industrial complex, the reason why it is so, uh, why it has such a bad reputation is um, the government wants control and the for-profit companies want cash flow. So they're like, okay, let's all come up with an idea. Well, why don't we just do cost plus? Whatever it costs you, we will give you 10% above that as your cash flow. So the natural out, uh, outcome of that is for Boeing and Lockheed to say, turns out it costs us a lot, like a lot. Oh, we're gonna, oh, we need 50,000 people for this launch. And it takes forever. And it takes forever, right. because the longer it takes, the more money they make. And so that, of course, wasn't the intention, but that's just how human nature works. And so SpaceX came along and said, Look, we're doing the math on this. This thing's not going to cost that much. It's not going to cost a billion dollars. It's going to cost fifty million dollars. And uh, the government would say, "But we'll pay you a billion. We just want you to do it our way." No, but that's the wrong way. You have to. You should do it this way. It's, it's fifty million. We were very happy with that price. The government was like, "No, but we don't want that." And we actually couldn't believe it. We're like, "But you must want it for a lower price." Actually, they didn't care that much about price. Especially the generals, the generals and the, the military, they really didn't care about price because they really needed it. They, I was one conversation with the general, it was very enlightening. He was like, I need you to understand, I am a general, I am in charge of success in war. I need it to be the way I need it to be. You need to understand where I'm coming from. I need to control this. And uh, I, it was enlightening because it's not untrue that if you're a general, you don't want to lose control but it had gone, gotten so out of hand. In fact, it was Senator McCain who fought for us in government to allow the government to do a different business model. So we have a lot of respect for him and we spent good time with him. Um, but without someone like him, like a maverick inside a government to say, hey, there's a different way here. We would still be in this world where you cough in the direction of, of space and it's you know, $10 billion, as opposed to a SpaceX, we're able to do a launch now twice a week, and it's all, cost, so it's, it's all you, we, we charge you a price and you pay that price and we deliver, just like it, as if we're Amazon. And, and that's how we ended up, you know, I think we now run 80% of the, of the launch business in the country. I want to take you to uh, September 28th, 2008. Tell about Disneyland that morning and oh, then yeah. everything you remember from the fourth launch that followed. Well, the, so remember we had three failed launches. They're all in Kwajalein. So Kwajalein is in the mid-Pacific. It's a military base. And that's the only place where we were allowed to launch rockets because we couldn't hurt people. And they were right because we blew up the first three. Um, <clears throat> so at this point, we had no capital left. 2008 was a disaster for all around. It wasn't just SpaceX. And there wasn't also much to do. So we didn't fly to Kwaj. We, 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 we were in LA. The control room is actually is in LA, so control room is, is this sort of uh, uh, mobile home in a parking lot. <laughs> so it's like literally as as uh, cheap as you can imagine. So the rather than stay in the in the control room, my brother and I went to Disneyland with our kids, and we had we had the best day because you're standing in line. We didn't have any VIP passes, and you just kind of like you're just letting the day pass. Like it's a way, it's a way to use up the day. And uh, we, had, uh, we had a great time. And we're like, we checked our watches, 
you know, the launch is at four. I remember it being at four o'clock and it was like 2.30. So we should, we should probably get back. It wasn't like, let's get back with much time to spare. So what, what actually turned out is we got there maybe a few minutes before the launch. So we almost missed it. But it was kind of the right, it was just, we were just kind of in the flow. We get there and the launch goes off successfully. And it, it wasn't like a celebration, it just, everyone just started crying. It was just this emotional release of years of working and um, people hugging each other. Uh, it, was, it wasn't like a celebration experience, it was like a, an emotional uh, uh, release. It was just, it was beautiful. And then I started t tearing up and crying as well because just, just the energy in the room is so, so emotional. Um, what we had done had never been done before. Uh, launched a private, a private company launched into, into, or, into orbit and it was the last shot we had before we'd be out of business. And was done by a team of 500. Boeing's comparable division has 50,000. I mean, this was truly a startup uh, and startups don't, don't do these things. Startups work on internet apps, so they work on whatever, you know, like kind of normal things. This is a government, this is what governments do. And then you get a $1.6 billion NASA contract a couple days before Christmas. Uh, yeah, it was, it was NASA saying, okay, you deserve to live.